Hi, hello, and welcome or welcome back to the Night Sky Knitting Channel. My name is Rachel, I am your host, and I am a knitter based out of Ottawa, Canada, and this channel is my chatty outlet to talk all things knitting with occasional guest appearances by other crafts because I have a strong tendency towards hyperfixation, and if I don't talk about this on the internet to all of you, I will ruin all of my relationships by talking about it in person incessantly to my loved ones. I this is a video that I'm very happy to be filming. I'm going to be talking about my 2023 knitting intentions, plans, inspirations, and actual patterns that I'm looking forward to casting on sometime in the next calendar year. And this is one of my favorite types of videos to film because it feels like dreaming out loud. You know, you have all the inspiration and all the excitement and you're not really in the trenches with anything yet. There's no <laughs> sleeve island or gauge issues or anything. When you're just like, oh yay, I have beautiful yarns that I love and some patterns that are calling to me and the world is my oyster. And I'm very much an external processor. A very valuable part of my thinking through things is talking about it with other people. And so that's a lot of what this video is going to be. Sharing my excitement, but also using this as an opportunity to think about what do I want to be knitting, what kinds of garments, what patterns, and how I think those are going to fit into my knitting practice in the next year. And yeah, the first part of this video is going to be talking about kind of more general goals and plans in terms of maybe like technique for example and then i will go a lot more in depth into the actual patterns i plan to be casting on and the yarns i plan to be using like this one that you can see saying hi in the corner of the frame and those patterns just for my ease of organization what made sense in my brain and you will have already seen this if you follow me on instagram but i kind of divided those up into cold weather knitting projects and warm weather knitting projects and well we'll get into that soon but in terms of broader knitting intentions maybe resolutions or goals i would like to make sure that i maintain a focus on improving my technique in knitting this year I will next month be entering my third year of knitting and I think that's kind of what makes sense for me right now is to work on improving my color work tension for example. I have recently taken up two-handed color work holding one when I'm doing two colors for strand color work holding one strand of yarn in each hand and I would like to continue practicing that because I'm still finding it a little bit difficult for example I can't do that when I'm using long needles for magic loop it really has to be a full circumference circular needle or improving how i purl because the way that i purl is significantly tighter than the way that i knit and that is not only causing some rowing out that i have to correct by going up or down or actually going up at least 0.5 millimeters in needle size on the purl side when I'm knitting back and forth. It's also causing me problems in maintaining like healthy posture and not straining my muscles or straining my arms when I knit because I find that when I purl with my thumb like that, the motion automatically has me turning my elbows inwards and that is my kind of problem area with knitting and making sure I'm doing it healthily is my elbows. That's where I feel strain and have to make sure that I'm not injuring myself. And I think that I need to either really relax my pearls or change the way that I purl to make it in line with the tension of my knitting. And I'm happy to report that um, if you watched a bunch of my earlier videos, you'll see I routinely talk about being a tight knitter. I'm actually no longer a tight knitter. My gauge and my knitting has loosened quite nicely, and now I'm often pretty bang on gauge when I'm just knitting, which, whew, what a relief. Which is means I can knit for longer because I'm not straining my muscles the same way, and it makes garments a lot easier. However, in terms of gauge and yarn substitution, which is nice that that's happened with time and also kind of just with my mental health improving. But the, my pearls have not loosened up in line with my knitting and I would, like, I would like that to be something that changes. Also my color work technique and I would like to 
pay more attention to the little details in knitting that kind of elevate it or can kind of look a little bit sloppy. I, an example of that would be picking up stitches, making sure I'm doing so at an even rate so that there's no awkward bunching where I pick up stitches or making sure that what I'm doing folded over in hems, for example, sometimes I get a little bit frustrated and hasty and then the line isn't as even as it really could be. Things like that I would like to be more mindful of and pay more attention to in order to kind of elevate my knitting, elevate my technical skills, understand garments a little bit better in order to continue to modify or tweak things to suit me. I'm also hoping that through a kind of a newfound focus on proper technique and clean work, I will learn more about what I like in fit and technique and what works better for me in terms of like cast ons and cast offs etc i hope that's kind of clear another thing that's important to me is to really try not to you can see i'm doing it even now i'm sitting cross-legged on my desk chair and then i have a tendency to hunch making sure that when i'm knitting i'm not hunched over like a little goblin which is something that i do all the time and that's not good for my back it's not good for my chest it's not good for my neck and I would like to <laughs> knit more standing up, knit more at my desk so that my, my body is aligned in a way that's good for my long-term health and make sure that my obsessive knitting and how much I love to knit and how often I am knitting does not like literally cause injury down the road. Another thing is making sure that emotionally and mentally my knitting stays healthy. I have a strong tendency towards hyperfixation. I said it earlier, and I can be quite obsessive with my loves and my hobbies, trying to make sure that I don't burn out with my knitting and making sure that I have a good mix of hobbies that I'm doing and also gift knits and knits for me because deadline knitting sometimes gets in the way of my enjoyment, even though I volunteer for those projects. And having a more realistic idea of what I can accomplish in a set amount of time is something that I need to work on. So those are kind of my knitting broader goals. And there are a few techniques that I would like to try for the first time in 2023. For example, steaking, probably in the form of the grown together mitts, which I talked about in a previous video, or working brioche, or my three-stranded color work abilities. I would really like to continue to grow in my knitting, in my abilities, and that's something that I that drew me to knitting at the beginning while also intimidating me, is the fact that there's kind of always something more to learn. There's always more techniques, more tools, more things you can do to elevate your knitting or adjust it and learn, and I'm excited about that in this new year. So, in terms of patterns, which I think is probably more exciting to most of you anyway, I have my phone here because I have my two little collages on, on here and it's a useful reference point, uh, but I will also put them on screen. So here is my cold weather knitting inspiration collage, and all of these are patterns that I am very excited to knit and also stock images of yarns that I actually already have in stash. And then I also have a summer or slash warm weather knitting mood board as well. But of course, all of us seasoned knitters know that I will probably still be knitting cold weather things, quote unquote cold weather things and warm weather and vice versa. So starting off with the cold weather, I also have this fun basket of yarns I collected from my stash as props because all of these I think I am using stash for. These are plan these are projects I have planned with stash yarns in mind because typically I prefer to buy yarn with a pattern in mind already, but I don't always do that. Sometimes I get entranced by a sale. So First on this list is the Lakes Pullover by Ozetta Knitwear, which is a oversized saddle shoulder sweater. And I've actually already started this one, but I must tell you, I have been really enjoying it thus far. I'm knitting it in this yarn that I have right here in front of us, already caked up, which is Knit Picks Simply Wool Worsted in the color Winnie. I think, yeah, from here, I think you're getting a pretty accurate color sense of this, but this is a very cool toned gray, beige, brown. I would say this is like a taupe or an oatmeal. And I 
have been loving this project so far. I was coveting it from the moment Ozetta posted the first photos and announced the tester call, which I did not apply to because I did not have anywhere near enough time. And I'm so glad that I did buy the pattern and <laughs> I've cast on because I have been loving the details, loving the shape, and it feels like a great ode to the deep winter months to be knitting this thick, wooly, big, loose garment in 100% wool and I've been loving it and my goal is to finish it by the first week or by the end of the first week of February so I can wear it because I really would like to. This lakes pullover is also my entry into the Young Folk Knits bougie sweater knit along um, because I think that this is the perfect bougie sweater and I'm really excited to keep working on it and probably will once I finish filming this and am editing it. Next, in one of the few accessories that I actually put on this list, since I am mostly focusing on talking about garments, are the Flora Mittens by Jenny Penny, which is an all over color work fingering weight mitten pattern that if you watch my underrated winter accessories video, you will already know has entranced me. And I have been really waffling over what colors I want because my coats are all kind of different color schemes and things that would look good with one coat aren't going to look good with my other coats. And I've decided I don't care about that anymore. And I think I'm probably going to use this Emily C. Gillies Luck of the Draw May 2022 um, yarn set and have it kind of be a sort of stripe gradient and then probably get like a white or a pink base. These were a gift from me to me with all of my love uh, to celebrate finishing my first year of grad school and I am still in love with them and I would really like to use them this year. This is the Emily C. Gillies Super Sock Base which is a pretty traditional 75-25 merino nylon and this was the limited edition Luck of the Draw Yarn Club. So you can't get these colors anymore. Very happy that I snatched them up when I did. But I think that I want to use them together so that they shine. And I think that these mittens are the way to do it. I also like that these are super wash for the mittens because it doesn't seem like a very long flow complicated mitten pattern. So I think a super wash will be fine without having that extra grip of a really rustic yarn to keep the stitches in place. And also, I like being able to machine wash mittens or at least wash them easily because mittens get gross in my experience because you, you use them to touch stuff in the outside world. So I'm probably going to use these. I might use another mini skein set in more traditional winter sunset like blues and pinks, but we'll see. I definitely want to use these and I definitely want to make the floor mitts, so we'll see if those two go together after all. Next on this list, and the only other accessory that has made it on here, is the Dies Winter Neck by Tonje Hodni. Tonji Hodni? I'm very sorry for mispronouncing that name. I'm really not good with Scandinavian names. Which is a brioche cowl dicky thing, which it's kind of like a, a turtleneck. It's one of those necks. It's meant to keep you warm under a coat in the winter. It's all over brioche. I think that would be a good way for me to learn brioche. I think that's a nice, warm, squishy winter accessory without being too heavy because by the end of winter, I get kind of tired of how heavy everything is. And I think for something that will be on my neck, I would really like to use the cashmere yarn that I ripped out of a commercial sweater that my father gave me for that purpose. However, this is a pretty thin yarn. It's a pretty light fingering. And the Dees Winter Neck is, I'm pretty sure, knit for worsted weight yarn or knit with worsted weight yarn at a pretty thick gauge. And I would probably have to hold this triple in order to meet gauge. And I would like to have this yarn go as far as possible and I don't want to use most of the rest of it for just one thing. So I'm currently battling those two kind of opposed feelings which is one i want this on my neck in something that i'm going to use pretty much every day and two i want to not have all of it go into one project so we'll see i really would like to knit that neck and i would really like to use this cashmere yarn to do it we will see if i do but i 
plan to make to make that and I think it would be fast I think it would be fun I think it'd be a good way to learn brioche and I think it would be useful so relating to my previous statement about wanting to improve my color work tension and my three strand color work tension and knitting ability is the Ovis sweater by the Petite Knitter not to be confused with Petite Knit the Ovis is a fingering or sport weight I'm pretty sure fingering because it's a 30 stitch gauge color work yoke sweater that features these really cute sheep and floral and leaf motifs that appeal to me i like that it's still kind of traditional looking but without with a little extra touch of whimsy it feels a little bit more modern i like the lower contrast and the sample and i think i can knit that with mostly scraps for the yoke, which really appeals to me. I would like that to kind of put leftovers above of a bunch of precious yarns in one garment so it doesn't feel like I'm just knitting scrap stuff to use up scraps. And for the base of that sweater, the main color, I want to use, or I'm pretty sure I will use this Dururum Natura Ulysse in the color Poivre et Sel, which is pepper and salt which is the same family as this one, but this is darker. And I originally purchased this to knit the Pippin sweater. However, in person, this has more character to it, if that makes sense. There's more texture and there's more variation in the color. And because of that, I worry that the knit pearl all over sand stitch texture of the Pippin would kind of be lost and it would just kind of be muddy, like it wouldn't feature the yarn very well and it wouldn't feature the stitch very well. So when the Ovis came out, I looked at it and I thought I would like to, I think, pivot and then use this as the main co color for the Ovis, for the body and for the sheep, and then a bunch of different scrap yarns for the yoke, for the color work yoke, and then I will use other yarn to knit the Pippin. But I'm thinking this will be really nice. And because I don't really want to knit a full garment in three-stranded color work at a 30 stitch gauge, one, I think that would be too warm for most situations that I'm in because every building I'm in has central heating or I'm outside and it's just too cold to be in just a sweater. So I think I'm going to go down a couple sizes that I've in the sweater and then go up a couple yarn, like go up a yarn weight and knit it at more of a sport or DK gauge. And for part of it, I will use this leftover knitting for olive merino and soft silk mohair, more true to color, along with this and some light blues and some light greens in order to make an Ovis. I think that'll be really, really fun. I think it'll be both very fun to knit. I think I will like wearing it I think it'll be cute. I think it'll be another nice, really cozy, warm, celebrate winter sweater. But I have some swatching to do before I really commit to this kind of color scheme. And departing finally from the very muted tones, neutral palette that I've been showing you thus far, I think I'm going to knit that Pippin sweater that I was telling you guys about in some really pretty blue yarn I just got on sale over Boxing Day. So I, Shibui Knits um, has having a sale to clear their stock because I think Erin of the Korean Knits podcast said she heard they're retiring um, and they're closing their yarn business. So this was 30% off. And then this was 25% off or 30% off for the Boxing Day sale that you knit. So I got these two in what I hope is a sweater quantity, but I'm not sure, we'll see. Which I suspect is going to be a rather stunning combination in a garment, especially with my coloring. I think it'll bring out my eyes nicely. And blues have been appealing to me more lately. I think I'm finally listening to my mom who always tells me I should wear more blue. And I think this will be the Pippin. I think that these two yarns will highlight that knit pearl sand stitch texture a lot better. Like, I think I'm, I'm walking into this project with some very high hopes because I love the look of the Pippin sweater. I like how Sophie Hemmings of the Knit Pearl Girl designs her sweaters. They suit me. 
The Pippin sweater has a compound raglan as well, where you change the rate of increases along the raglan line at different points in the sweater, which I have found suits me very well and fits my body better. And you avoid that kind of bunching of fabric around the armpits. So I'm thinking that's going to be a lot of fun to knit and something that I will cast on probably towards the end of winter, but we'll see. Moving into my warm weather knitting plans mood board collage, I am thinking I will probably, I'm thinking the transition to summer knitting for me will maybe begin with the Cumulus Tee by Petite Knit, which is a fingering weight t-shirt pattern. I'm sure you've seen it before. It's the Cumulus line of patterns by Petite Knit, I think are amongst her most popular and it's Petite Knit, so everyone knows. And I will be knitting it in this Color Mart Wild Silk in the color Perla, which is this rather luminescent gray. And I think this will be so wonderful in the summer against my skin. I have more garments lined up for summer than I do for the colder months because I really don't have a lot of good summer clothing. A lot of it is quite <laughs> gross, doesn't fit me anymore, has major stains and holes because I've had it for 10 years. And one of my priorities in knitting, much like last year, is to make myself an updated classic summer wardrobe that fits the fact that I'm now a full grown adult woman. And I think a nice silk tee would fit the bill. I also think that with the right trousers, I could wear the cumulus tee in this to my office. Will I still be working there in the summer upon my graduation? I don't know, but if I am, I would wear this. This is the first pattern on this list that's not size inclusive. I think it goes up to either a 2XL or a 3XL. Petite Knit has in the past committed to updating her catalog of previous patterns to a 5XL to run to a 5XL. However, I don't think she's done that for very many and a bit hit or miss with petite knit and size inclusivity. However, my hope is that this will be updated somewhat soon and I thought I would point that out to you guys in advance. Uh, in general, I try to only showcase size inclusive patterns. I try to only knit for myself size inclusive patterns, which is easier for me than I think it is for others because for example, my favorite thing knitwear patterns don't hold much appeal to me. I like the look of them, but not more than other basics. Like for some reason, Ozetta seems to have me in a bit of a death grip when it comes to basics. And I'm not a huge loose cami fan. So her camisoles have never really, like I, I didn't feel like I had to sacrifice anything by not knitting those. But I try to, if I show something to you, you can hopefully assume that it goes up to a five, like probably from a 28, to 30 inch bust to a 60 inch bust. And if not, I will do my best to warn you. But I also know sometimes it can be kind of annoying when you're watching a video and it feels like they just keep saying, oh, and this isn't size inclusive. Oh, and this isn't size inclusive. So it's because everything else is when I show you things. Okay, um, what's next? I would really like to knit myself a fluffy, fuzzy pink cardigan. I have a very precise vision in my head and in my heart of what this cardigan will look like and what my life will look like when I wear it. I would like a v-neck, like one to two inch cardigan with a vertical button band and a raglan and I want it in a DK and I want it in pink and I want it to be like a girl's night out cardigan or something that I wear in the spring over a white t-shirt and some mom jeans and my boots and I will be feminine and fun and warm and happy. But I can't find a pattern that's size inclusive that fits the bill, so I'm kind of still looking. I've asked you guys before if you had any ideas, but what I want is so precise that I'm having trouble finding a pattern that fits it and is size inclusive, so I'm gonna keep looking, but I didn't get yarn for it. And I will make this eventual fuzzy pink cardigan in this combination of yarns. This is, once again, Emily C. Gillies. I'm holding it over here because this is where my window is and the natural light is a little bit more true to color than like what's going on over here, even though I really appreciate having the ring light to even out me. 
This is Emily C. Gillies Mohair Silk Lace in the color Sandstone. I got this during their I'm moving across the country and need to clear up my stock sale. And it was a wild price. I got two, I got a sweater's quantity, very excited. And then it took me a while to find something that I could pair with it that I liked. And I know that it doesn't look like these two are gonna go well together. But when I twist a strand of each together, they do go very well together. And I like that it's kind of bold and out there because I want this to be a fuzzy pink, bright girl's day cardigan. And I think I'm gonna get it with this combination once I find a pattern that I like. This is Malabrigo Ultimate Sock in the color Rosalinda, which I got using a gift card to Knitomatic from my mother. And Haley, the owner, was very helpful in helping me find something that matched this. And it took me a while, so really excited about this. You guys, you guys are just going to have to trust me when I start it that these are going to look good together. And first I have to find that cardigan pattern. So this will be probably my one of my transition into spring pieces along with this because I do expect that a fingering weight t-shirt in silk is going to take me forever to knit and this is also part of the impetus for fixing my purling because silk is really not going to be forgiving when it comes to my purl tension issues and most of the yoke is a v-neck so I will be knitting back and forth and I really would prefer not to be rowing out on the top because I know it's not going to block. It's not going to fix itself in blocking. All right. My next summer knitting priority is a pattern that was actually on my 2022 Make 9, and I just didn't get around to knitting it because I was focused on thicker summer knitting projects so that I would have things to wear. But this is Kelborn Woolens Mojave in the color natural. It's a cotton linen sport weight blend that I'm going to be using to knit the Ozetta Road Tripper tee, which is a Henley raglan with a button-up collar. And I hope that that'll be a fun project to knit in the summer. And then hopefully it'll be done before summer ends so I can use it. Okay, returning from a brief intermission to greet my roommate who just came home. The next pattern I'm really excited to cast on and then have this summer is the twist loop top by other loops which is a high neck ribbed camisole with three cables going down the center integrated into the rib that i think is a really cool detail and i think will be very fun to knit and fun to wear this is another fingering weight pattern and i plan on using some knitting for olive cotton merino in the color dusty aqua or soft aqua yeah, soft aqua that I got at the end of summer in a sale at Unit. So it ended up being quite affordable, which is, I mean, most people are familiar with cotton merino at this point, but it's a 70-30 cotton merino blend. And I think this will be a wonderful summer fiber to have that airiness and lack of itch of cotton with a little bit of the memory of merino, I hope. We'll see. And... That is the plan for this. The twist loop top is the other size exclusive pattern on this list. However, I'm knitting it with a friend who is not really on knitting social media, who is just dipping her toes into knitting garments. She's been knitting for a lot longer than I have and has done a lot more intricate cable and texture and color work patterns in the past than I have. However, was a little bit wary of garments and She's knitting her first ever sweater right now, which is the Structure Loop Top by Other Loops. And she feels very comfortable with Other Loops garments and feels like she can accomplish those. And we wanted to knit a top together and have matching tops. And so we landed on the Twist Loop Top. And she's going to knit it with some yarn that I got her. So she got me the pattern and I'm very much looking forward to doing so. This is another fingering weight pattern. So it's going to take me absolutely forever. But I think by the end of this summer, I'm going to have a bunch of really, really classic, modern, lightweight, loose, wearable summer garments that I made myself. And that will be wonderful. I also give more of a pass to smaller designers and less established designers when it comes to size inclusivity and exclusivity 
in the hopes that as they grow and as their ability to grade improves and you know their resources expand, they will be able to hire graders or um, expand their testing pool, manage a large group of testers, etc. And so that's kind of my personal stance on choosing patterns. Of course, size inclusivity is important because I don't like the idea of being like, look at this beautiful thing, you can't make it. So that is the twist loops top. I think it's really nice. I also really loved Florence of Florence Handmaid's version. I saw it, I thought, yes, I would really like that. And so when my friend was like, let's make that top, I was like, heck yeah. The very last garment I have on this list is the Svilla Cami by Kadri, which I would like to knit in this, once again, a neutral, <laughs> Avis etc. yarn that I got from Shop La Mercery earlier in the fall. And I don't think I showed this on a podcast because it was during a time when I didn't really record much because there was family stuff going on. But I got my Dororum Natura Ulysse basically for free because I won a gift card in a knit along a year ago to an American yarn shop called Shop La Mercery and that covered the cost of this yarn and while I was doing that order I looked through and I think this was on sale on that site and it's a yarn I've never tried before and the base was very interesting to me. It's 60% wool, 20% rami which I'm pretty sure is basically paper and 20% silk. It's the color pebble and it's grown and spun in South America, hand dyed with greener shades, acid dyes in Germany, and it's got certified the dye. So I wanted to try it, and I think that this will be really nice for my first loose cami for myself. I typically don't gravitate towards a lot of camisoles because it's just not my thing. And sometimes I find with a higher neck top, I just feel more comfortable. However, I would really like a nice loose triangle cup camisole to tuck into things into my maxi and midi skirts and my jorts and have kind of an easy breezy summer night here and there and I would really like this for that. I'm also more comfortable with a 60% wool content yarn if it's not going to be fitted. I think that that'll be an interesting experiment to see if that works well for me and so that is my final planned summer project that I would like to share with you guys at this moment. Of course I have a lot of gift knits that I'm thinking about making, but will not be discussing publicly at this time. And there will always be hats and socks and scrap projects that continue through 2023 because I really like having a mix of bigger projects like the ones I've listed today and smaller projects as palette cleansers, as on the go whips, things like that. And I would really like to finish my gosh darn crochet afghan. I'm so close. I just need to sit down for a few evenings and do it. But we're coming on the two year anniversary of that being cast on in the first place. And so I would like to finish it so that my roommates and I can enjoy it this winter. Thank you for listening. Thank you for letting me talk to you guys about this. Those are my plans and intentions and goals, etc. What are yours? Are there any patterns that are calling to you? Are you focusing more on patterns that you'd like to make or techniques that you'd like to practice? Let me know. I'm very curious. Okay. Bye guys. Thanks for watching.